Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're going to talk about 9mm ARs. Uh, in particular we'll be talking about quarter circle time, but we're going to go over a little bit of the, the history of the 9mm AR. Uh, what we have here is a Colt. This is actually one of their semi-automatic only uh, 9mm carbines. Um, if you look at the design, uh, basically you see standard AR components. You see a standard AR receiver. Uh, you see a standard AR upper receiver. When Colt designed this, they wanted to keep as many parts in common with the uh, standard M16 or M4 as, uh, as they actually could. So, uh, for the most part, the gun was never really optimized for a 9mm. Um, it was designed in the uh, 80s by uh, Colt's Hank Tatro, probably one of the most brilliant uh, uh, small arms designers of this era, uh, with, without a doubt. Um, it was designed as a, as a direct blowback, uh, no gas system. Um, there are several problems that were found with the 9mm in this design uh, that uh, would go unsolved or un, really even unlooked at for uh, you know, more than two or three decades uh, you know, with Colt. Um, they were certainly the first 9mm on the market. Uh, they were made in semi-automatic and fully automatic configurations, barrel lengths, uh, you know, between 10-inch you know, and 16-inch. And, uh, um, the, the, the basic components that were changed from the standard AR other than, of course, the barrel and uh, the flash suppressor were uh, the, the uh, buffer itself. It was designed as a steel, uh, steel buffer. It was, that extra weight was uh, desired to keep the uh, bolt forward uh, long enough and close long enough for the residual pressures to drop. Of course, the bolt carrier uh, was changed. It's actually a, a bolt, not a carrier. There's no actual bolt, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. And this little gadget here, um, which is another very uh, misunderstood component, a lot of people like to refer to that as a cartridge case deflector, which it in fact is not. It's actually a gas deflector. Uh, due to the fact this is a 9mm, you have a lot of unburnt pistol propellant uh, that's ejected out of the ejection port. And um, that would actually end up on the face of the shooter. So the whole purpose of this uh, deflector here was to divert uh, unburnt propellant and not hit the shooter's face. Uh, you will see where the cartridge case does strike it, uh, however that is not the purpose for it, nor is it needed. Uh, if you were to fire this without that on there, you would see that it would clear a left-handed shooter without a problem. But uh, the earlier rifles did not have this, it was more of the uh, more of a second generation that it was added to. The other things that were uh, done with this was, uh, if you notice there's a different color between the uh, hammer and trigger pin here. The, the trigger pin is just is the, is the blackish, however this one is a stainless steel color. Uh, that was done as a reason. Due to the much higher rate of fire uh, on the 9mm submachine gun, a 9mm caliber rifle, uh, it caused excessive pressure uh, on that pin uh, when it would slap the trigger back. Uh, so two things would happen. One, that pin would snap right in half. Uh, so that's why the stainless steel was done. The other issue that would come up is uh, the back of the hammer would actually strike the tail of the uh, disc connector and actually would snap it right off. Uh, so those were a couple of the issues. Another, another issue that came up too was um, due to the fact that you were missing about a half of an inch on the bolt carrier itself, um, the, cart, the bolt carrier would actually have about a half inch or to actually accelerate before it smacked into the uh, bolt catch. And what that would do is that would cause the bolt catches to break after a while. And that's something else that wasn't addressed until actually around 2009. Um, however, you know, the 9mm was never really pushed, it was never very successful, not because of its merits, uh, just because Colt didn't push it. Uh, pretty much anything that came out uh, that would, the Colt size would compete with their M4, they just didn't want to come out with. Which, uh, you know, that caused some problems. One, uh, it opened up the market for every other company to come out with products to compete with Colt. Um, and, you know, two, it was just one more thing that they would not be doing um, for engineering uh, to develop new products. Um, now the 9mm carbines and 9mm submachine guns, regardless of their form, they've not, uh, they've lost, they, they've pretty much lost all of their popularity here in the U.S. There's very few SWAT teams or police departments anymore that use the 9mm. Uh, they've switched over to 5.56. For the longest time there was a big fallacy of that uh, the 5.56 would over penetrate in um, urban environments. Well, the reality is that's not true. The 5.56 with its high velocity cartridge, red and thin jacket, uh, was more apt to come apart in sheet rock and in brick uh, than in the 9mm. Uh, so in reality, the 9mm would over penetrate. Um, that's, they, they've gotten that here in the US, however, abroad, the 9mm submachine gun is still a very viable uh, weapon in the Middle East, in South America, Central America, uh, just to name a few countries. 
But getting back to the actual design of this, <clears throat> again, Colt never wanted to make a dedicated receiver. Uh, what they wanted to do was they wanted to go with a um, something generic. All they had to do was uh, modify the magazine well, which is exactly what they did. The first generation actually had two inserts uh, that would actually be uh, placed and then uh, drilled and then pinned into place. The rear actually accepts the is the ejector. The ejector on this thing is rather finicky. Uh, once it's installed, it has to be timed or adjusted. Um, when they are first dropped in, they probably will not uh, line up against the side of the bolt that's in there. And if they don't, it can actually miss the uh, the bolt it's, the bolt itself, and it will you know failures to eject. So basically, after these are uh, assembled, uh, Colt would actually have a special tool they would stick in there, and they would bend the ejector over, uh, so it actually would time it. The front was just a guide, and you can also see there's that the feed ramps are actually on the uh, device itself. Again, you're making up for that half inch uh, where you were not going to have any um, any bolt. Uh, you're just going to have the carrier, so you have to have that feed ramp in there. And one of the interesting things about the 9mm design is this uh, one of the very few designs that Colt's ever done where the extractor and bolt lose lose control of the, of the cartridge when it goes into the chamber. You have a very brief time uh, where the bolt is not in contact with the, uh, the cartridge, uh, nor, is the, nor is the feed lips. Um, so that's one of the uh, unique aspects of the 9mm. This got to be uh, you know, too much of a pain in the ass for them to put together. So Colt's Art Daigle, who's our, who's our model shop guy, probably one of the most uh, brilliant model shop guys in the industry, came up with his own design where he actually would have a insert itself. So basically you would just pop this insert in and then you would, you would have a bolt or a hex key that would actually, as you tighten, it would push these, these sides out until it would uh, secure. This was a great design, however, lowest common denominator, People were over tightening these, they were bulging the magazine well out, and needless to say, it just couldn't work. Um, when it was done at the factory, it was done properly, it was good, but uh, anytime you get somebody else involved who doesn't know what they're doing, for instance, end users or gunsmiths who don't know what they're doing, um, something goes wrong. You'll also notice um, this was modified too, so it will use a standard bolt catch rather than have to use an extended bolt catch, which is using the 9mm. That would just lift upward um, on, on this piece right here, which would actually lock the uh, bolt to the rear. Then came the next production and the current production one. The exact same thing you see there, with the uh, difference being there's no there's no screw in the bottom and it's not put in this way. This one here is actually inserted in, and two drills uh, come in and, it, and it's drilled and pinned in place. You still have the same benefit of not having to use the uh, you know, a special uh, bolt catch. Um, you still have to time to time the uh, ejector. Um, so this is the this is the current one that Colt's using. But again, uh, one of the issues has always been, you know, you should make this as a dedicated nine millimeter. It doesn't have to be as long as it is. Uh, it looks a little weird. Um, but the benefit to this is, uh, which I like better than the uh, HK MP5, is this is much more user friendly. Bolt locks open to the rear. You have the bolt catch like you do uh, on, an, on an M16 or M4. Selector's easy to get to, as well as the magazine release. Um, it's just, uh, to me, maybe just because I'm used to using M16 or M4s, it's so much easier to use than an MP5 uh, due to um, having all the controls easy to use. To me, having the bolt lock open the last shot is a big deal. First of all, that saves uh, you know wear and tear on the firing pin. And second of all, uh, it allows you to know when it's empty without hearing a click. You know, with any M16 or M4 rifle, when you're firing this thing, you can actually tell uh, by the sound and the feel when the bolt locks open to the rear. Um, then when you reload it, you just insert the loaded magazine, hit the bolt catch, you're ready to go, rather than have to reach up forward and grab a handle and pull all the way back. Now, for as far as durability and reliability, you know, the MP5 has always gotten the edge on that because it has a locking system. Um, but the one area where I will give the MP5, the magazines that were used on these, were actually modified Uzi magazines. And the one thing about the Uzi magazines, they are a pain in the ass to load. Um, when you actually are trying to load rounds into them, it, being they're straight like this, uh, even though it's a, you know, it's a double column, it's extremely painful to load. In fact, I like to use the, uh, the Maglula uh, Lula loader. That makes this completely easy. 
Um, so anybody who's loading these magazines, you've got to get a little of them. It just makes it so much easier. MP5 magazines, on the other hand, are much easier to load, which is uh, come to a story time right now. Um, around 2008 or 2009, um, while I was working at Colt, I was sent to India, to Hyderabad. Um, due to the, if you, if you guys recall, the uh, Mumbai shooting where you had the terrorists that came in and they shot up uh, several different locations. And the uh, police mostly just had whips. They didn't have any firearms. And what firearms they did have were World War II era um, British Enfield rifles, you know, ones that you were not going to compete against an AK with. They had no uh, anti-terrorist capabilities. Well, after that, they decided they were going to have anti-terrorist capabilities. They started up two units, one called Octopus and one called Greyhound. They were looking to go with modern weapons. So they were on a hunt for a proper submachine gun. So Colt competed with uh, HK. So it was a Colt SMG and an MP5. I was sent over from Colt, along with one of uh, the gentlemen I worked with, uh, during to do the trials for the Colt 9mm submachine gun. So the, uh, the Indian commandos, uh, they broke out with all their ammunition that was made there and they were trying to load the magazines and they were just having a heck of a time, especially when you're loading, you know, thousands of rounds. I mean, I, I believe we had over 10,000 rounds at the time. And fortunately in my bag, I happened to have a couple of the, uh, the Maglula loaders. So I pulled those out and gave them to them and those guys were just as happy as could be. Uh, we went through the, the testing. And I do have to say that the, uh, the ended up winner uh, was the uh, Colt 9mm submachine gun. However, when those guns were ordered uh, from Colt, each one had to come with a with a Maglula loader. So that you know that that's a must for these. So now we're going to go forward a little bit. Um, you know, we're going to take a look at actually the bolt carrier group bolt itself. As you can see, there's no actual bolt. It's a solid piece of steel with the breech face uh, machined into the face. You also have a tungsten weight in the back here. Uh, what that does is it uh, gives you additional weight, which holds the bolt closed long enough for the pressures to drop safely so the cartridge can be extracted. Um, this has become an industry standard component. There's been a couple of iterations of this, um, which Colt has worked on over the, over the years. But, you know, again, this gun, well, it's not really modernized anymore, uh, the fact that you don't have an ability to mount uh, optics. You certainly could put a rail system on here, like any 9mm, like an EM4 carbine would accept any kind of a rail system. But we had the, you know, we had the carrying handle. So there was definitely room to, to improve this. But Colt, for some reason, never really completed the design. They, they, they stuck with it, uh, you know, as, as, as it is to, as to now. Uh, they would only address issues as they would come up. Um, for example, um, another issue that I had run into while at Colt was in Jamaica where we had had issues with, uh, well, we had one where we had a, car a fire cartridge case that actually landed in the trigger compartment because you don't have that extra inch when the bolt comes back to the rear, the trigger compartment is actually exposed. Uh, so we actually had a, had a cartridge case we caught in there, which was the first time I had ever seen that, but we had to, we had to come up with a good explanation for the Jamaicans. Um, and then, of course, we still were having that issue with the, the uh, with, with the bolt catches breaking because of that acceleration. Um, when we had gotten back, I actually proposed a design to Colt, uh, which was a uh, extension of about a half of an inch on uh, the the face of the, the buffer. Um, in their wisdom, they decided not to go with that rather than go with uh, the one piece uh, change. They had added an additional piece to the back of the uh, recoil spring as a spacer. And what that spacer did was it uh, made the bolt halt at the same location uh, a standard 5.56 would, so there was no acceleration. It would be caught immediately. Uh, that eliminated both the issues with the, uh, the over-travel along the cartridge case to get stuck in the trigger compartment, as well as uh, the, the bolt catches breaking. A uh, company came along, uh, well, I've, I'm not really sure the actual date of when the, it originated. The um, company was called Double Diamond Law Enforcement. And the, there, was, there was a partnership between several people who came up with it. And uh, what they did was they actually made a proper nine millimeter lower receiver, a proper dedicated nine millimeter lower receiver. A double diamond would end up uh, becoming dissolved. Um, the owners had a falling out and the partner uh, reopened, the partners reopened under quarter circle 10. 
Uh, Corner Circle 10 is a completely different company than uh, the Double Diamond Law Enforcement. Uh, there were a lot of people who had issues with Double Diamond not delivering product. Um, you know, there's there, there just a lot of negative issues not being able to get a hold of them and so forth. Quarter Circle 10 is totally different. Um, there's there's two partners who own it, uh, and their customer service is is perfect. Um, there there's just no uh, comparison between them. And I also, in my opinion, uh, Quarter Circle 10 has taken over the nine millimeter AR market or uh, any pistol caliber market. Um, they are the industry standard right now. And we're going to take a look at some of these things that make that one unique. So first we're going to go over the actual uh, lower receiver itself. We're going to take a look here at the inside of the uh, quarter circle 10 lower receiver. As you can see, we have a, uh, it's machined specifically for the 9mm. There's no excessive uh, aluminum or wasted aluminum. Looking at the inside, we've had some modifications. We actually have two feed ramps on here which uh, is also a major enhancement over the original one. It actually guides the rounds into place versus uh, the original Colt design. And the ejector is actually free-floating. Um, this is also part of, of what makes this thing as reliable as it is. Um, quite, uh, and, and it works well, there, there, there's no issues. Um, it does use a similar type of a, uh, of a, of a, mag, of a bolt catch as the, as the standard one. Um, this uses a standard, uh, or standard AR type bolt catch. I'll take a look at the trigger compartment in here. This is also open in here, so if you have a registered lightning link, um, you can drop that in place if, if need be. Um, this one here, I've got some additional parts, and I put the, the badass uh, Metal Arms Developments um, Ambi uh, Safety in there. This is a Seekins Precision Billet um, Magazine Release Button. I have a Norgon Ambi Catch on here. If you notice, uh, we, I spoke earlier about the uh, stainless steel hammer and trigger pins. I actually have both stainless steel hammer and trigger pins. There's not really a need to have the trigger pin in there, but I happen to have an extra one, so I threw it in there. It does use a standard uh, mill spec type trigger group in there as well. Um, you can actually see a little bit of where that hits on, on the back in here, on the back in here, where it's uh, silverish. You can see where that does hit. Um, this is an issue that uh, has not really been uh, dealt with by a lot of companies. The only one who's actually really dealt with it is uh, Six Hour with the uh, with the MPX. Uh, they actually put a shelf in there to prevent the, that from ever contacting it. Now the buffer mechanisms. Uh, there's a couple different ways to go with it. Um, you know, as it was designed, uh, this actually is the prototype that I designed while at Colt. Um, you'll see there's a, it's, it's two pieces. Um, what differentiates this from a standard one is, is uh, this forward part here is about a half of an inch longer than the standard Colt. Um, again, what this does is it prevents uh, the cartridge cases from being able to get into the trigger compartment in here. Um, which again, Colt decided to go the route of uh, adding a spacer to the rear that does the exact same thing. This one here uh, is actually the uh, Voltor A5 mechanism. And here you can also see this was Colt's answer to the question here. Um, this is this is the uh, spacer that was used. So basically, if you were to take that length uh, with the standard bolt, now again the A5 you have a longer uh, buffer tube, so you're not really getting a good idea from these components here. But uh, in a standard shorter compartment, standard mill spec compartment, um, you would use a shorter. It would be a shorter buffer. Uh, but this is the actual cap that was used. Now, uh, this this buffer here weighs about the same as this one does. Uh, Voltor offers several different ones. And this just happened to be something that uh, Quarter Circle 10 has sent me. Uh, so I was able to throw it in there, and I've had absolutely no issues with it whatsoever. Um, Colt had offered two buffers. One was a solid, and one was a two-piece. The two-piece was for the uh, fully automatic and the solid was uh, was for semi-automatic only. Again, you have a really high rate of fire on these. Some of these can be well over a thousand rounds a minute. Um, there are some different buff buffers you can get for it. There's some of the hydraulic buffers, which I've used in the past as well. Um, again, I tend to like Simple Stupid. Um, this system here works awesome. Uh, no problems with it. It's reliable, it's durable. So uh, I actually stuck with what uh, Quarter Circle 10 recommended. One thing you do notice with the 9mm uh, is you get a lot of unburned propellant. Um, it's, uh, it's just one of the things that comes out of shooting the pistol caliber guns. Um, it 
it's uh, in fact I try, try to clean most of it out of there but uh, with the nine millimeter that's why that gas deflector is a good thing to have is to keep that out um, I shot uh, oh, probably 250 rounds out of this yesterday and the amount of unburned propellant was unbelievable when it was inside the uh, uh, trigger compartment but uh, this lower receiver for as far as I'm concerned um, has corrected all the things that probably Colt should have done years ago um, but again quarter circle 10 is dedicated to pistol caliber ARs where Colt uh, was trying to protect more so their M4 and that's uh, where, they, where they spent their time on it I'm going to take a look at the upper receiver uh, the upper receiver on here is completely uh, custom by me. Um, I have a Centurion uh, C4 handguard on here, and I do have the Mansa rail protectors. Um, this will get hot uh, when you shoot a lot of rounds, especially when you have a suppressor on it. Now, the upper receiver here is uh, is Valtor. Um, this one was uh, sort of a custom job as well. Uh, they modified this piece here uh, so you could uh, install the, uh, ga the gas deflector. We have our standard... Uh, cartridge case deflect, I'm sorry, our standard ejection port dust cover. Um, these are Voltor front and rear sights, uh, which are which are made by another OEM for them. Um, the barrel itself uh, is an eight and a half inch barrel. It's a Faxon firearms barrel. Uh, Faxon makes some of the nicest barrels in the industry. Uh, this rifle is extremely accurate. I'm very, very pleased with it. Uh, reliable as can be. Um, they nitride the outsides of them. And the can that's on here is the nine, is the nine millimeter uh, octane by Silencer Co. And this was with uh, some, with uh, subsonic ammunition. This sucker is quiet. Uh, it's quiet and it's reliable. Um, using a can requires a lot of extra cleaning, which of course because uh, you know, you're getting all that much more back pressure. Um, now we're taking a look at the bolt itself. Now, Quarter Circle Ten has gone ahead and redesigned their own uh, bolt as well. Looking here, you have the standard Colt pattern. And here you have the quarter circle 10. Yeah, they're very similar uh, for as far as, uh, the, you know, they had the tungsten weights in them. Um, they modified their extractor system. Uh, quarter circle 10 has modified the extractor system. The Colt uses more of a 1911 type extractor. Um, uh, quarter circle 10, it was really interesting that they did it this way because uh, Colt did this with their early prototype 9 millimeters. Uh, they couldn't make it work properly. So whatever uh, quarter circle 10 had done, uh, they had corrected that issue and um, it works beautifully. Looking on the other side, it's uh, labeled as a C for Colt 9mm um, because as we're going to see in a minute, uh, Quarter Circle 10 not only makes a Colt pattern 9mm, they make a Glock pattern as well, which basically is the same lower receiver you see here, but it takes the Glock magazines, which we're going to get into next. Uh, the magazines for these are made by a couple different companies. Um, the Colt magazines are manufactured by a company called um, Metalform, uh, which are excellent magazines. Um, that's what this is right here. Um, Metalform also makes their own magazines now too under their own brand. This actually happens to be a uh, Metalform magazine. Uh, the Colts will actually have Colt on the bottom of them. Um, also are made by C Products, C Products Defense, uh, which are also excellent magazines. Um, there are some of the cheaper polymer magazines out there I'm not really particularly fond of. They come in these 32 round capacity as well as 20s. You can get 10s and 5s as well. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, this system here uh, is incredibly robust. It's reliable. Um, the ammunition that I've used uh, has been uh, regular M882 ball, uh, 9mm, uh, no problems. Also, I've used uh, both Winchester and Federal 147 grain subsonic. Works work perfect. Uh, Black Hills uh, 115 grain full metal jacket, no problems. I did try some hollow points in here. Um, for as far as uh, the Hornady 147 XTP, worked beautiful, uh, no malfunctions. I did have a box of uh, Remington Golden Sabres, and I did have a one failure out of uh, the magazine of 20 with that. These guns, again, are designed to fire ball ammunition, not hollow points. Uh, some of the hollow points out there that have a proper ogive on them, um, they will uh, they will cycle. So what we're going to take a look at now is going to be the Glock pattern. Undoubtedly, the most popular handgun in the uh, in the industry is the Glock pistols, um, and particularly the Glock 17. Uh, the Glock 17 has seen military use, law enforcement use, as well as massive commercial use. So a logical step would be is to have a AR 9 millimeter carbine that would actually take a Glock pattern magazine. That's exactly what we have here. 
Um, quarter circle 10 offers two different lower receivers. Uh, they offer the Colt pattern and they also offer the Glock pattern. Uh, the biggest difference is, is obviously the magazine well area. Um, this particular magazine is SGM Tactical. Um, it's also, there's also obviously the Glock magazines. The Glock 18 machine pistol um, had these magazines designed for them uh, because of obviously being fully automatic. However, this will also take a standard Glock 17 magazine. Uh, it will take a uh, Glock uh, the 15 shot, Glock 19 magazine as well. I have not tried a Glock 26 magazine. I don't have one of those here. But it will take the 15, 17, and the 33 shot magazines. Um, in this rifle, I have tested um, the SGM Tactical. Uh, I probably have like five or six of those, and they work perfect. 100% uh, reliability. Um, they they lock the they lock the bolt open. Um, most of the Glock 17 magazines will uh, you know, also. The biggest problem that exists with these is uh, the bolts locking open to the rear. This does have a standard bolt, uh, you know, bolt catch on it and has a, has a mechanism which we're going to take a look at uh, to, to actuate. However, not due to the to the, to the to the lower itself, but due to the actual magazine variations, you can have some issues with it locking open to the rear. That's why if you notice a lot of 9mm or submachine guns do not lock open to the rear, such as the MP5, uh, for example. Um, such as many of the submachine guns that are blowback, you know, if you can go back to the MP38s, um, and those kind of guns, but most of the submachine guns that you that you see, they don't lock open to the rear. The Colt was one of the first ones that really did that. Um, but this one here, it was it's very tricky. Um, of course, Circle 10 has made a lot of efforts to try to make it as reliable as possible. Um, they have a special spring in here to lighten this, to lighten the load up on the bolt catch. They made modifications to the actual catch itself, but it's really impossible to get this to work with every single one. It's just not designed like um, the Colt is. Uh, the Colt magazines, they work 100%, 100% of the time. These here, I probably would say maybe 75, 80% of the time, these will lock open. However, if you find the good magazines and you stick with those magazines that you know work with it, you'll never have a problem. Um, I, you know, I have quite a few 9mm Glock magazines. I've, I've gone through them and I've seen which ones will lock open and which ones won't. So I have a separate bag of magazines that I'll use when I fire this one. Um, the Glock extended magazines, I think I have probably three of those. Two of the three will lock open in the last shot. You put them in a lock pistol, they all work 100%. Um, it's just a very different uh, type of a mechanism. Um, and of course, Circle 10 at one point was looking at uh, getting rid of the bolt catch mechanism. It probably would be a good idea, at least in my opinion. Um, using these magazines uh, and this type of a rifle is just something that's very difficult to do. But uh, obviously your uh, magazine catch is going to be different because you have a different location on the right. So you have right there. You can see it will lock open on the, on the, on the last shot. I'm going to go over the outside of this rifle before we get into the inside. Again, this is another totally custom rifle that I, that I have built. Uh, but there's some things that I want to point out. Of course, we have the quarter circle 10 uh, lower receiver. On the top here, this is also the brand new Quarter Circle 10 uh, upper receiver. Quarter Circle 10 offers two different types of upper receivers. Again, them and Voltor went together to design a pistol caliber specific upper receiver, which you can see. So you just have, you have a pistol caliber opening. This will work for anything from 9mm up to 45 auto. This particular model is a standard AR type with a top charging handle. You guys will see this. Quarter Circle 10, this is actually a uh, Voltor gunfighter uh, charging handle. And the other one that they have is actually a side charging handle, uh, which again has a lever on the left side that you would pull, you pull back. Um, myself, I like the Colt pattern. Uh, it's just, just me. I'm not much for side charging handles. Um, but uh, as you can see, the fit and finish uh, on the receivers. I also understand that uh, Voltor is going to be making a lot of parts for Quarter Circle 10, which is awesome because uh, you're marrying up you know, just an incredible design with the incredible machining uh, capabilities of Voltor. This also, I went with the two uh, stainless steel hammer and trigger pins. This one, like the other one, has also got the uh, Battle Arms Development Badass Ambi Selector. Um, this is the uh, Magpul uh, STR stock. A little hefty for uh, a lightweight carbine, but I still like it. Um, now, like the uh, like the Colt, um, Voltor had recommended to go with the uh, A5 uh, you know, buffer and in, uh, in, in receiver extension. So I just went with it. Rather than using the mil spec, I went with the standard uh, Voltor A5. And again, 
This gun here has probably had at least 500 to 1,000 rounds through it, and I've had never had a hitch with it. Um, now with the now with the recoil and you know malfunctions, I mean obviously you do get some bad cartridges once and again. Nothing that was due to the gun. I have on here one of my staples is I like to go with the uh, the Arms uh, 40L uh, front and rear sight. These are actually the uh, the steel ones, the metal ones. Uh, I don't particularly care for polymer uh, backup sights, but these are beautiful, uh, you know, folding sights. The handguard again is a Centurion C4. Uh, it's a mid length. You know, I don't know what it is. It's just the Centurion ones. They look nice. They're uh, they're durable. They're reliable. They uh, don't require any modifications really to the gun whatsoever. They offer QD point attachments. Um, they attach right to the barrel nut. It's just a it's just an all around good handguard. And again, I have the Manta rail protectors. Again, when these things get going and uh, they get hot, these things are heaven sent. Uh, make it easy for you to hold on to it. The barrel itself uh, is a Yankee Hill uh, nine millimeter barrel. Very, very accurate barrel. I've uh, been very happy with it. And it's topped off with a uh, Smith Enterprises Vortex flash suppressor. Uh, especially considering this is a 9mm where you get a lot of unburnt propellant, this does a heck of a job on uh, eliminating flash. So uh, the gun is pretty much custom. Now, Quarter Circle 10 does offer their own handguard now, too. Uh, this was made before, uh, before Quarter Circle 10 made some of their own uh, other components. Um, I, so I got the receivers and the bolt. However, um, you know, as of now, first of all, they're they're introducing uh, full-length rifle carbines uh, and carbines. They're offering uh, pistol versions of the rifle as well as SBRs. Um, so they're offering complete guns as well as just the components. And they've also come up with their own handguard as well, a free-floating handguard. Uh, right now they have it. Uh, I believe it's a pistol pistol-length uh, type of a handguard. Um, they also do manufacture a lot of their own barrels. Um, unfortunately, when I was doing my write-up on these, uh, they didn't have any, any barrels available, so I had, to, I had to look elsewhere at the time. Uh, but they do offer barrels uh, in 9mm, 40, and 45. Uh, you'll, if you look at my videos, you'll also see uh, videos on their 9mm, or sorry, their 45, and their 40 caliber. Um, and all of them are excellent, excellent uh, designs, reliable. Uh, they weren't released until they were corrected. What we're going to do now is take a closer look at the uh, at the Voltor Glock pattern lower receiver. Okay, taking a look inside the uh, Glock pattern uh, lower receiver by uh, Quarter Circle 10, you'll notice that uh, there had to be some modifications here uh, to actuate the magazine catch uh, on the follower on the Glock magazine. So when we insert that in, as you can see, that moves up and it pushes the uh, bolt the bolt catch up. Now this uh, tends to be one of the issues. There's some different uh, different followers out there. Some of them uh, are different shapes, so that can cause problems with it. Um, these were designed basically on the uh, on the Glock magazines. Now you got some current ones out there, uh, the new Magpuls and the uh, new ETS magazines, uh, which this particular receiver has had some issues has had some issues with. Um, I'm not really concerned about it, but Quarter Circle 10 has uh, fixed that issue. This is one of the, uh, the older. Uh, Quarter Circle 10 lower receivers, but again, using these Glock magazines, it works perfect. So basically, you have the arm uh, that lifts upward on the magazine, or upward on the bolt catch. Now they've modified the spring uh, and the, the spring and plunger assembly uh, to go along with the bolt catch. They've modified it with a much, much lighter spring, so it takes less uh, weight to lift it up than, than it normally would, which is necessary, uh, you know, due to this design. Um, that's really the only thing that really is different about the Glock pattern versus the uh, Colt pattern is just the forward assembly here. Um, there are other companies that have come out with it, um, and again, you look at some of the companies like JP Enterprises who has one, and they decided to omit the bolt catch altogether. You know, it's very good. To, it's nice that uh, Quarter Circle 10 is still trying to make it work. Um, I just don't know if it's something that you can really make work reliably. Uh, I know they are still working on it, and I've seen a lot of... Uh, a test where they are working now with the uh, the uh, ETS as well as the Magpul magazines. Um, I'm actually quite happy with the way that this is. Um, I just make sure that I use the proper magazines right now and uh, this gun works excellent. And as we spoke earlier, this has the same Voltor uh, buffer tube in it. So now we're going to take a quick look at the bolt carrier itself. Just due to the way the extractor and ejector work on, on the Glock pattern, they've had to do a custom uh, bolt carrier for this. 
Um, this is right in, the, right in the side G9 millimeter for Glock 9 millimeter. And this is made right in house by uh, Quarter Circle 10. Uh, it's got the pinned in weight in the rear. Very, very, very well made. There's been some modifications to the extractor itself here. You can see that it is different from the uh, from the Glock from the Colt pattern. Um, just very, very well made stuff. Um, they use all modern CNC machines, um, and their their growth right now has been astronomical with uh, what they offer. Uh, again, looking at calibers, uh, they're offering nine millimeter, forty, and forty-five. Um, if you're interested in the 40 and the 45, we have videos on those. We're going to take both the uh, Glock pattern and the Colt pattern uh, carbines to the range, and we're going to see how they shoot. We have here is the uh, Quarter Circle 10 9 millimeter. Uh, this is actually in a uh, eight and a half inch barrel, and we have a Silencer Co. Uh, suppressor on here, uh, DI Optic. Um, as you can see, this is a very much improved version of the 9 millimeter. Uh, it actually has a proper 9mm uh, magazine well and we're going to put several rounds through here we're going to take a look at uh, not only just the reliability of the rifle itself but also uh, the uh, great work the suppressor does. Ammunition we have here is Federal. It's 147 grain full metal jacket, subsonic. Again, we have more Federal 147 grain subsonic American Eagle. Uh, what we have here is a uh, Remington Golden Saber. Uh, I'm not quite sure how this is going to go, if these are going to feed or not. So uh, we'll see. This is a, it's got a good uh, O-Jive on it, but again, it's, uh, it may or may not work. Some expectations. I wasn't sure if this was going to work or not, just due to the type of ammunition that it is. These are these are designed for ball ammunition, not for hollow points. That was one malfunction out of twenty. <coughs> More federal. More Federal American Eagle 147 subsonic.
we have here is Winchester 147 grade subsonic ammunition. This rifle here, 100% reliability with the full metal jacket ammunition and a 1 out of 20 with a, a golden saber. Uh, there was another magazine I forgot to mention, it was in there too. It was a uh, Hornady XTP 147 grain subsonic and it had no problem with that one at all. Um, another quarter circle 10. This is actually their 9mm Glock uh, lower receiver. Uh, with the exception of the magazine, while well, everything is the same except we're using Glock magazines. We have both Glock and SGM Tactical Magazines, um, both are 33 shots as well as several of the 17s. Um, we have a 16 inch barrel on here. Um, we're just going to run a whole bunch of magazines through and we're going to see how it does. SGM Tactical. Uh, this is a uh, Remington 147, 115 grain full metal jacket. This is a uh, Glock Magazine 33 shot with a uh, 147 grain full metal jacket, uh, American Eagle, subsonic. This is Black Hills Ammunition in a uh, SGM Tactical Magazine. See, we got a nice hole cut through the center of that uh, target out there at 25 yards. More Black Hills 115 full metal jacket.
gonna try a few of the uh, standard Glock 17 magazines now, 17 shot. Uh, this has got a little, little, little few less. Um, 147 grain full metal jacket. Black Hills 115 grain full metal jacket. This is the primary benefit to this model with the Glock uh, magazine is that you can take duty Glock magazines and insert them into a carbine. We had 100% reliability with all the uh, magazines that we tried. The 9mm AR has come a long ways. Uh, you know, Colt certainly did pioneer it uh, back in the 80s. Uh, however, it has been modernized and brought to really the next level. You, know, you go from a standard, uh, you know, M16 type uh, 9mm carbine to the modernized M4 type. Um, quarter circle 10 has gone and they've uh, adapted it to. Not only the original Colt pattern, but they've also gone with the uh, the Glock magazines. Um, of all the guns that, that Quarter Circle sells, the, these are the most popular lower receivers are the uh, the Glock, just because there's so many Glock pistols out there and the magazines are plentiful. Um, you know, just not to mention just the sheer modularity, uh, being able to put whatever handguards you want, turn them into short barrel rifles, um, being able to go with the, the, the suppressed. You know, and anybody who's familiar with this system, they like it. Um, you know, still to this day, of any rifle that's out there, the M16 M4 series is the finest human-engineered rifle in the world. Human engineering means everything is easily easy to get to: safety, magazine release, bolt catch. Everything is so easy to get to. Uh, the magazines are so to be able to take the uh, the rifle and evolve it into a pistol caliber uh, is just one more step uh, in why this rifle is the most popular rifle in, in America. Um, Quarter Circle 10, I think I do believe, uh, based on everything I've seen and, and, and heard, um, they are the new standards for uh, the 9mm pistol. Um, they have put uh, more time into being able to uh, update these rifles than, than any other company has. Um, I do see a future for these guys in, in uh, international uh, military. I don't know if they're ready to go that route yet, but uh, they have the quality and they have the uh, their ability and reliability. Um, where they could compete with uh, a lot of the guns that are out there. Um, you know, they're a Texas-based company, which is uh, happy for me um, here in the Republic. Um, their parts are easy to, easy to access. Uh, the customer service is second to none. And uh, I know they've talked about putting out some 357 SIG variations as well as a 10 millimeter. Um, I look forward to seeing, uh, seeing those and, and whatever else they have coming out. Uh, at SHOT Show 2016, they also introduced another lower receiver that uh, many people are going to be excited over, uh, and that's one that accepts an MP5 magazine. Now, MP5 magazines uh, are plentiful. Uh, they're extremely expensive. Um, I don't know what the popularity is really going to be on that one just because of the sheer cost of the magazines. They're excellent magazines, there's no question, um, but uh, they, they are expensive. Um, I do believe these are going to be the, you know, the two flagships um, of Quarter Circle 10 uh, for, you know, for years to come. Uh, they're going to, I'm sure they're going to continue to evolve them and continue to improve them. So anybody who's looking for a 9mm version of, uh, or a pistol caliber version of this rifle, this is the one-shop stop for both uh, uppers, lowers, bolts, and barrels. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, please click like and please subscribe. Thank you.